how they develop within the commercial sector. And in fact, now what has been implied here, what I'm saying is, it's one thing we can say to give the market control of the, of the um, iPhone that appears to be innocuous. But do you really want to give the market control of genetic engineering? Or the market and government control over ever, ever more intrusive surveillance technology? And there's another level of problem here that we have to deal with. We have just so far, and I emphasize just, tech control on the use of atomic technology. Just, we've been so close to nuclear. But now, and robotic technologies, well, what about them? Well, the question is, they're nice when they're playful. Let's see if I can get this to wanted, another big event all to itself. And while Beijing's college student robotics competition falls slightly short of global, there were some pretty impressive robots on display. 99 teams from Beijing and Taiwan participated in the two-day event, which included boxing, athletics, football and golf. The competition also featured a dancing category where students programmed their metallic creations to throw shapes. This one's supposed to be Michael Jackson. The robot football was also a must-see. It was basically five-a-side, but with robots. China currently tops the world in robotics competitions in terms of how many people take part and more, like this one, are springing up all the time. But, Bill Joy, biological species almost never survive encounters with superior competitors. In a completely free marketplace, su superior robots would surely affect humans as North American placentals affected South American marsupials, i.e., there are no kangaroos in South America. No, basically, in fact. What Bill Joy goes on to say is I edited the quote here. Robotic industries would compete vigorously amongst themselves for matter, energy, and space, incidentally, driving their price beyond human reach. Unable to afford the necessities of life, biological humans will be squeezed out of existence. So be careful. See what we And we also know, too, the other problem that we face is that there is an inherent weakness to the external control of technologies whose unconstrained deployment could be disastrous for Kashyyyk after the tsunami of the nuclear plant. So the problem here is with a technology like nuclear, which is inherently dangerous, we have to surround it with external controls. Sooner or later, they break down. So in that case, then, we, in a sense, we could say the very logic of destructive technology is that we have to start thinking about designing technologies in some way. But the problem is, of course, we don't yet think about that. You know, and in fact, it's notable, it's really interesting that in all the readings we gave you, except on technology, except for Simon, and Simon's is the oldest reading in 1968, design is never mentioned, or virtually not. Why not? There's a range of reasons, I think. The whole, well, everything I touched on last week about the concept of technology. There's also a little, I mean, a little bit of a problem in the concept of design itself. 
I didn't have time to convert my diagram into some more conventional tricycle. So you've got the scribble here. But basically part of the problem is that if this is the conventional product or technology development process and the graph is going and time is going to the right here, then the technology product is conceived and developed and design enters only at the end. Design is just a question of what colour you paint it, if you see what I mean. Design enters in at the last moment. It's that which is external to the working of the technology itself. It makes the iPad look gorgeous, but it's completely irrelevant to almost to its technology. That, at least, is how one is seen from the technological perspective. It's part of what I called two weeks ago the inversion of making a technology where the technology becomes the dominant um, axiom. So the prior assumption from technology is that technology is a form of making that constitutes the world and design is really entirely peripheral to it. There's also, though, even deeper, there's a kind of intellectual or metaphysical hierarchy at work here, which is something like God, this one, the hierarchy, there's this kind of hierarchy, the, the, or this linkage between the laws of ultimate existence, the laws of natural becoming, and technology as law-derived second nature. You can see what you can see here in kind of metaphysics of technology. Look, what makes us big and rich, technology says, is that we have law on our side. This is technology that directly emerges from the discovery of scientists. Bill Joy again. I've long realized that the big advances in information technology come not from the work of computer scientists, but from those physical scientists. It's a long quotation on that. Read it. The key here in these last two comments has been this notion about law. It's fundamental, absolutely fundamental to the constitution of the modern world. I think The modern research experiment is related to the verification of law, meaning that there is, he talks about, in fact we could say that the verification of law is the very point 